Good evening. <laughs> and welcome to Tuesday night uh, midweek service at the Church of God, 4601 South Drexel Boulevard. Thank God for each of you that pressed your way out tonight. And those of you that are looking on social media, God bless each one of you. We're glad that you're here with us. So before we get started uh, into part two, um, we want to acknowledge the Lord that he'll bless us, give us wisdom, because I don't know how to be a blessing to God's people, and I sure wouldn't want to try without him. Amen. So if you'll pray with us. Eternal God, our Father, we just thank you, Lord, all your goodness and mercies unto us. Lord, you've blessed us over this weekend, dear Father, and all the reveling going on. You've kept us safe, dear Father God, as we've gone about the streets and whatnot. Lord, you've been with us, and we thank you for that. Now, Father, we come together to hear your word once again. We need you, dear God. We need your guidance. We need your wisdom. Take this vessel, dear Father, and just use it for your glory. Edify your people, and we'll give you all the praise because it belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. All right. Now, last time when we talked, we were talking about, are you a star, right? And we gave different testimonies on how we show ourselves as stars to this world, a light for them to follow. But this time the title is, Follow the Stars. And it's ta I'm talking to the saints this time, more so than how well, the sinners follow the stars. What about the saints following the stars? Because we have some stars to follow too, all right? to make us a greater star. Exactly. So let's go, let's go into the word of God and see what am I talking about, all right? We'll start with Hebrews 11, verses 1 and 2. What does they say? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. All right, so you know we can't be a star without faith because our light can't shine if we can't trust God. The devil will put it out real quick, all right? So we're gonna talk about some people of faith and how their light, their influence saved a multitude, all right? All right, we're gonna start first with Jesus prayed for the church. He prayed that we would be stars. Did you know that? Let's see how, what do I mean by that? John the 17th chapter. And we'll skip a little bit, all right? Well, let's start with verse 1 and read down to verse 4, and then we're going to skip to verse 6 and then verse 8 to start off with. So what does John 17 and 1 say? These words spake Jesus and mm -hmm. lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, yes. Father, the hour is come. Yes. Glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. All right, it was time for Christ to be glorified. Let's see in what way was he going to be glorified? What was his burden regarding his being glorified? Read on. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, yes. that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So he's talking about giving eternal life to others. He already had it, right? But it's his burden to save the world. All right, read on. And this is life eternal. Yes. That they might know thee, the only true God, mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Amen. Read. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have glorified thee on the earth. I was a star. I have been a star on this planet. Read on. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And God help us to be able to say the same thing when we're pressing a dying pillow. If that makes sense, pillows don't die. <laughs> But when we're on our deathbed, we want to be able to say, Lord, I finished the work you gave me to do. Amen. Read on. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. So the men that God gave him saw God in this man that was standing before him working all these miracles and speaking such wisdom, right? They saw the work of God in him, read on. Thine they were. Yes. And thou gavest them me. Yes. And they have kept thy word. They have kept your word, and you blessed me to give it to them. His light was shining through his word, read on. 
For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me. This is verse 8. Keep going. And they have received them. They and received have, the word. And have known surely yes. that I came out from thee. Yes. And they have believed that thou didst send me. And that's what we want when we're witnessing to others, when our light is shining. We want people to be convinced that God is with us. Not with us out there in the flesh trying to say something because we know so much. Not at all. Well, that won't have any effect on anybody's soul. Right. But for them to be convinced by how we go through tests and trials before them, the wisdom that comes out of our mouth, the edification that they feel when we speak to them, words of comfort, words of love, they feel it. They can feel God is with this person. All right? Right, verses 9 Verse and 10. I pray for them. Yes. I pray not for the world. Right. But for them which thou hast given me. Yes. For they are thine. Amen. Read it. And all mine are thine. Yes. And thine are mine. Yes. And I am glorified in them. So you know when your light is shining, you are glorifying the Lord. That's what it's all about, right? All right. So we're going to get a, a little bit of a background here before we go out and talk about following the stars. 1 Corinthians, and we want to read verse um, chapter 1, verse 9. What does that say? God is faithful. Yes, he is. By whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And those are the ones Jesus prayed for. God saved them and put them in fellowship with Christ. Right, sent them right into fellowship, which means if he sent us all into fellowship with Christ, then we ought to be easy to fellowship one another because we're all fellowshipping Christ. Now, if it's hard for me to fellowship with you, then either one of us is not fellowshipping Christ. That's what that comes down to, all right? Okay, go back to John 17. Read verse, verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, yes. but these are in the world. These saints of mine that you gave me, they're still down there. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm coming back to heaven. All the persecution and all the pain is going to be behind me. But these are still down here. Read it. And I come to thee, yes. Holy Father. Yes. Keep through thine own name mm -hmm. those whom thou hast given me. Yes. That they may be one as we are. Keep them unified. Oh, how bright. The, the light shines when the saints stand together on one accord. That is a beautiful light. That is a convincing light because people just don't stick together. That's right. But saints of God standing on the sea of glass, not being uh, moved by babbling and their erroneous teachings, not being moved by somebody hypocritin or saying some mean mouth things against God's people, not moved by that. But standing on the word of God, shoulder to shoulder, glorifying God, walking in the light together, that's the church. That's the church. What verse are we at now? Verse 13. Read it. And now come I to thee. Yes. And these things I speak in the world mm -hmm. that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. When people see joy, no matter what we're going through, we still can show joy and not I don't know what I'm going to do. I need somebody to help me. No. You already have the Lord. Who can be better than that? Right. You go to him first. If you're going to shed tears, let him see the tears, not everybody else. That's right. Let him give you strength to show them so your light can shine because he'll do that. All right? So he wants to give us that joy in spite of tests and trials or hurtful things. There's a joy that he keeps down on the inside that doesn't go away, even in hurtful times. Have you ever experienced that kind of joy? It's a stabilizer. It helps you not to panic, not to go off into, oh, my God, you know, and, and like people say, freak out. There is a joy that says, I'm here. I'm here. It's okay. Just host, don't say anything. Just don't do anything right now. That's right. And watch him work it out before you. Amen. What power? Read on. Verse 14. Okay. I have given them thy word. Yes. And the world hath hated them. And the world hates us today. But you know, we can't be bothered with that. One man with, with God is, a, is like a thousand. Right? 
Two can put 10,000 to flight. But we got that kind of power. What are we worrying about some flesh out there talking about us? Ain't nothing but flesh anyway. What the scriptures say? What is man whose flesh is in his nostrils? Is that what his oh, breath is in his nostrils, not flesh? <laughs> Ooh, that would be awful, your flesh in your nostrils. <laughs> that would really be scary. <laughs> whose breath is in his nostrils. What are you scared of him for? God could go like that and take his breath right away from him and he dropped to the floor. That's right. Who, who, who are we serving tonight? We're stars, remember? Amen. Read on. I have given them thy word. Yes. And the world hath hated them mm -hmm. because they are not of the world. And that's the beauty of it. People sometimes don't even really know you like that, but they just feel like they just don't like you. Isn't that amazing? But sometimes I look at it, maybe they're just jealous. Why? Because we have joy. We can come in, good morning, how you doing? Praise the Lord if we can get away with that, right? So different things to glorify God. They put pressure on us, we still have a smile on our face. Why? We're not of this world, that's why. The world be ready to curse somebody out, right? Go in a bad mood, have to go off and go smoke somewhere, or go get a drink somewhere. But not the saints. We don't react like that. We don't act like that. We don't look like that. We're not of this world anymore. Our spirit is otherworldly. That's right. It's heavenly. Even though we're down here, we have a heavenly spirit. And that's why they see something different. That's why the light can shine. That's what draws, because they say, what is it about you? Right? Yes. Read on. Because they are not of the world. Not at all. Even as I am not of the world. So don't worry about trying to fit with the world. Because that's something the devil really tries to put on us. You sticking out like a sore thumb. That's why nobody want to hang around you. You're just weird. No, devil, you're weird. And you're not in me, so I am not weird. Another, matter of fact, I'm the one that's normal. It's the ones out here that can crazy that are weird. That's right. They just don't know it. Amen. That's why I always say, be proud of who you are. Yeah, the world's going to hate you and might speak against you and all of that stuff. Let them. As long as it's not true, you're good. Amen. Any more? Verse 15. Okay. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. No. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. So we're not going to try to fit in with the world. He's not going to take, we're not going to escape from the world when it's not time to go. So when your tests and trials come, no point in you sitting down, I wish I could go to heaven right now. I, I don't want to be here. Lord, just take me. Just let me die right now and go to, no, you ain't going nowhere. You're going to come through your tests and trials like everybody else. All right? So just, just get over it. Oh, so the devil, you mean. No, I'm not mean. I just want to see you survive. That's right. We have to have a certain attitude as saints to survive out here. Or the devil will shame us. And, oh, and can you imagine being ashamed of Christ? Be ashamed of him? That's crazy, right? Absolutely. Be ashamed of the devil. Be ashamed of sin. Be ashamed of flesh. Amen. So we have the attitude of being a star, so when things come against you, it's just going to make your light shine brighter, that's all. Because the joy of the Lord, and Jesus prayed for that joy, is our strength. You can come through anything if you have joy. You can. It doesn't matter how hard it is or how hurtful or disappointing. If that joy is still down in your soul, guess what? It's going to bubble right back up. And you might feel a little down, but yet that's something inside that says, praise the Lord anyhow. It does. And after a while, you start feeling better. Little, you lighten up, right? It's the joy. The very spirit of joy saying, you can make it. Thank the Lord. Amen. Read on. Verse 17. Okay. Sanctify them through thy truth. He prayed for our sanctification. All these things make us into the best stars ever. That's what it comes down. He prayed that for us to be a star. That's what it comes down to. 
Sanctify them through thy truth. Read thy, it. Thy word is truth. So as we obey the word like the disciples, they have kept thy word. Well, we're, we're disciples too. And by the grace of God, we mean to keep his word. And that's why those of us that are sanctified are sanctified because we kept his word consistently. Thank the Lord. Read on. As thou hast sent me into the world, yes. even so have I also sent them into the world. Now look at this. He already said we're not of the world, right? And there's a scripture over in Titus that says, love not the world. And since we're not of the world and we don't love it, he sent us back into it? What does that mean? Notice he didn't even say about sending us back into the world until he said sanctify us. Because when we're sanctified, he's sending us right back into the world. But the world's not in us. What are we going in the world for? To shine, to be stars in a dark place. Amen. People that sat in the shadow of death have seen a great light. Light has sprung up. It was him. Now it's us. And Christ in us. The hope of glory shining from within. Isn't that awesome? Yes, it is. The world's not going to get saved through us if they can't see that. Amen. Any more? As thou hast sent me into the world, mm -hmm. even so have I also sent them into the world. Yes. And for their sakes, yes. I sanctify myself, mm -hmm. that they also might be sanctified through the truth. All right. So he sanctified himself. Now you realize he basically is already sanctified. He's filled with the Holy Ghost without measure, right? But he went through those steps, why? For us. Because he came down here to show us how to make it back up there. He, he got it already. But he went through all those different things to show us in the flesh we can make it. In these, in these carnal bodies, these earthly bodies. 1 Peter 2.21, what does that say? For even hereunto were ye called. Yes. Because Christ also suffered for us. Suffered for us. Leaving us an example mm -hmm. that ye should follow his steps. Follow the star. That's the first star we're going to follow. Walking in Christ's steps. He taught us how to suffer graciously. You know that? Not with our head hanging down and now we depressed and so-and-so didn't treat me right. I didn't get that job and all the rest of that. And are you still saved? Oh, you're good. You're good, right? Yes. Amen. So we were called to learn how to suffer. All right? And we're going to go a little further with that. First Peter 4 and 1. What does that say? For as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, yes. arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. Now, and why? Read on. For he that hath suffered in the flesh yes. hath ceased from sin. That's what stops you from sinning. When flesh can't have its way, your light shines. Flesh will obscure your light. And if you're not careful, it'll put it out if you keep going off in the flesh, right? Absolutely. But when flesh is subdued and we don't feel sorry for ourselves and we're willing to suffer, not because we just like to suffer, but for the Savior's sake. Lord, I'm going to go through this for your sake. Of myself, I do not want to go through this, but that you might be glorified because I love you. I'm willing to do it because I love you. And I've told him that before. With a certain test coming, I could, Lord knows I'd walk out of this in a heartbeat if I had a chance. But Father, if this is what you ordained for me, then it must be either I need it or it's going to glorify you in the mix. So you know what? Just give me grace. Going on through it, Lord. Just like I talked about with that class I had to deal with for, for two and a half weeks that I could have walked away from. I said, let my light shine in this thing. Because the whole school is watching. Because they knew what was waiting for me when I walked in that classroom. <laughs> but they saw I still had a smile on my face. No matter what I felt on the inside, <laughs> I still had to be pleasant, right? One time, uh, one of them, um, teacher across the hall, came, uh, came after school. She came over and said, so uh, how did your first day go? And I said, 
I'm going to show you. <laughs> it's easier to laugh at it, you know what I mean? To make light of it than to go, oh my God, is this what I walked into? Rather than do that, I just made light of it. And she had to laugh, right? That's right. And I kept that all the way through. And I got made it to the last day. Hallelujah. I made it to the last day and walked out of there with a smile. And they were saying, thank you, thank you. And it's good to leave a good name wherever you are. It really is. These other, other subs just walked out. They wouldn't even last. And the students were all in the hallway. They wouldn't even stay in the room. But you've kept them down. You, you this and you that. To God be the glory. My light has to shine whatever I'm doing, wherever I am. Even especially in those situations, right? That light has to shine. So I'm glad that I had an opportunity to shine there. Thank the Lord. All right. So when we suffer in the flesh, we're not going to sin. So don't worry about suffering. Let your light shine through, right? Back to John 17. And we're going to look at verse 29 now. Yeah, that 20, 20, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, right. but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That's us. I mean, it's everybody for the last 2,000 years, but we're at the end. He, that prayer included us. Isn't that precious? He thought of us. We were no, in nobody's mind. Our, our ancestors hadn't even been born yet, you know what I mean, <laughs> in that sense. And he thought of us. Amen. Thank God for Jesus, I'm telling you. And verse 21 says what? That they all may be one. There it is again. Read it. As thou, Father, art in me. Now that's unity. That talk about oneness. Read on. And I in thee. Yes. That they also may be one in us. Yes. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. So the world can believe the church is right. That the church of God is right. Amen. Because they believe what they see. They're not looking at the word of God to see what we're supposed to be like and all that. They're just watching. Amen. We're living epistles to be read of every man. All right. Let's go a little farther. So at what, 22 now? And the glory which thou gavest me, yes. I have given them. Yes. That they may be one, even as we are one. Standing together, letting our light just glorify God just being shining stars together. When we all come together, it ought to, people on the outside are looking at us ought to see a bonfire. You know that? That's right. I mean, a fire that can be seen afar off. Who's that? Mm, that's a saint's gathering. That's that water, a fire that water cannot put out. All right? I'm letting us know. But we're, but that's, that's his expectation of us. Amen. And he gives us grace to be just that. What, verse 23 now? I in them. Yes. And thou in me, mm -hmm. that they may be made perfect in one. Be made perfect. So he has the power to make us perfect. Let him do it. Just let him. Like the word said, just let your light so shine. Let it shine. It doesn't need you to pump it up. It'll shine on its own. Because the power of God in you is going to shine. That's right. It's going to show off. People are going to see it. You cannot be hid as long as your flesh is not obscuring the light. Amen. Read on. That they may be made perfect in one. Yes. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me mm -hmm. and hast loved them yes. as thou hast loved me. Amen. Thank God for that, 24. Father. I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, mm -hmm. be with me where I am. So he prayed for us to make it home to glory. Amen. He had us covered. He got us covered till today. Read on. That they may behold my glory, yes. which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Amen. What a beautiful prayer for the church. And it stands even today. So he's the first star that we followed, right? But then he gave us a few more stars that we can follow as well. Um, patriarchs, did you know they're stars? 
they're stars too. So let's look at a few of the stars uh, that are from back in the ancient day. Maybe another day we'll talk about the more, more modern time, like 2,000 years ago, or maybe even today. Because that would be a part three. <laughs> okay, Hebrews 11 again. Sometimes he says, hey, let's walk, take a little gospel stroll. And we're not, we're not rushing through, we're not beating the desk and saints, you know. That's good for those that do that, but it's powerful for those that are, that's given to. I'm one of those I just kind of walk through. Or a slow rain, you know, give you a chance to absorb. That's what I do, by the grace of God. Amen. It's all right. Good. <laughs> Hebrews 11, verse 4. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Abel was a star. You hear that? Abel, way back in the beginning of the time, God had a star. Amen. And why was he a star? Because he gave the Lord an excellent sacrifice. And God accepted it, right? And consumed it for his glory. And his jealous, lazy brother was looking on. All right, read on. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Yes. By which he obtained witness mm -hmm. that he was righteous. Yes. God testifying of his gifts. God could testify of him. Can God testify for you? Think, and if he testified, what would he say? Right. Got to think about that sometimes. But I'd rather think about that now than when I'm getting ready to take my last breath and... I hope I make it. I don't want to be like that. Mm -mm. I want to say, I'm going home, y'all. Amen. And know where home is. Read on. And by it, he being, de being dead, yet speaketh. Because Cain in his jealous rage killed his brother, right? And the blood of his brother testified against Cain coming up from the ground, cried against him. Amen. But he obtained that testimony because God testified his light was shining. All right. How about uh, verse 7? By faith, Noah, mm -hmm. being warned of God of things not yet, not seen as yet. Now, look at this. I'm, some of these words we let pass by us and we don't really think about it. Can you imagine yourself being warned of God of something that's never happened before? Could you just jump? Oh, okay. I'm on it. I'm on it and you've never even heard of it? Wouldn't it give you pause? Is this God? Wait, Lord, is, is this you? That don't sound right. I never, what, where, what? Read on. By faith, Noah, mm -hmm. being warned of God, of things not seen as yet. Not seen as yet. Read moved it. with fear, mm -hmm. prepared an ark to the saving of his house. By the which, I'm sorry. Go on. By the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. All right. So he moved with fear, even though what God was telling him hadn't happened yet. Let's go into it a little bit. Genesis 6. Let's get a closer look at Noah, a shining star in the word of God. We'll start with uh, verse 5 and start reading down a little bit. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Yes. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. How does that, how does that sound? Couldn't that be the news for today? Definitely. Read on. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. How does God feel now? He, read verse 7. And the Lord said, mm -hmm. I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Yes. Both man and beast mm -hmm. and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But what about Noah, verse 8? But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah's light was shining. Noah was a star. And God was getting ready to, to bring down wrath on this planet, but Noah stood out. That's why we don't have to fit in with this world. We want to stand out. 
So when God's wrath is getting ready to come down, guess what? I'm not trying to fit in with something that's about to get destroyed. Not at all. And we have to remember that this world, this world is not going to stay here forever. It will be destroyed ultimately. And I'm not trying to be a part of that. Not at all, okay? Read verse 13. What does that say? And God said unto Noah, yes. the end of all flesh is come before me, mm -hmm. for the earth is filled with violence through them. Yes. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. My God. Read on. Verse make, 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Now remember, he's saying this, and it's probably overwhelming to hear that. I'm getting ready to destroy this whole planet. And you're about the only one that's going to survive, you and your little family. Can you imagine being told that? Would that, sound, would that scare you half to death? I think so. Could we just read it like, oh, and Noah found great? You know, but no, think about it. You were in that situation. That was not a piece of cake for Noah. Not at all. And the responsibility he laid on Noah. Read on. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Verse 14, yes, read on. Room shall thou make in the ark, mm -hmm. and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. He had to make this gigantic boat. And think about this was the beginning of time. So they didn't have hydraulic tools and, you know what I mean? Ways to, and he was just him and his sons trying to make this thing big as a, a football field. Think about that. Talk about the grace of God. Ooh-wee, that's a miracle in itself. Okay, read on. Verse 17. All right. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of waters upon the earth. Mind you, it had never rained. It had never rained at that point. So for him to say, I'm going to bring a flood of waters on the earth, the, how did the earth get watered? A little mist, like dew, came up from the ground and watered the plants. That's all they ever saw, something that maybe wet their feet. But nothing ever fell out of the sky. Now I'm going to flood you from the sky. What? Read on. To destroy all flesh. Yes. Wherein is the breath of life from under heaven, and everything that is in the earth mm -hmm. shall die. Ooh-wee. All right, what does verse 18 say? But with thee. But with you, Noah. Will I establish my covenant. Yes. And thou shalt come into the ark, mm -hmm. thou and thy sons, and thy wife, and thy son's wife with thee. Read on. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort, mm. shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. They wow. shall be male and female. Look at this responsibility. Now you got to go out there and bring two lions, tigers and bears, snakes, <laughs> lizards and all. Of course, he probably didn't care back in those days. Maybe <laughs> I'd be the only one screaming <laughs> if I were back there. But they had to bring two male and female of every animal that was around them. And God probably sent the animals walking toward them. So they couldn't just go all over and just find them. Monkeys fell out the trees and said, let's go to the ark, you know. And, <laughs> well, you know, I'm using my imagination, of course. But they talked in monkey language. <laughs> but they had, but they, he had to send them to the ark. And Noah had to make a way to let them in, feed, feed them. Can you imagine the stench that was in that place? Right. But he had to do it with a smile. He moved with fear. He didn't doubt God. He didn't offer an argument. I can't do this. He didn't do that. Because there are some people in the Bible that did say that. And God was not pleased, right? But you want me to do what? He didn't do that. He was a star. Because what God asked him, because God said it, he was willing to do it. It might have taken him years to put all that together. Because God had given a grace period for, um, you know, for them to get right, and nobody did but the family. All right, so yeah, that was a, a huge undertaking. But he did it. He didn't, nowhere to say that he complained, that he wanted a, his way out, right? That his children rebelled. None of that. That's an example for us. That's why it was written here. Read on. Verse 21. All right. And take thou unto thee of all food that is eaten, 
and thou shalt gather it to thee, yes. and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Read it. Thus did Noah. Read the rest of According it. According to all that God commanded him, so did he. He did everything God told him. Noah was a star. Now, are you willing to follow a star like that? So God might ask you to do something that sounds like outrageous one day. You don't know. He might give you a responsibility that have you kind of rock back on your heels a little bit. But will you be willing to do it? Because God knows what's in your heart. Lord, help us. Whatever you ever ask of me, I know if you ask me, then the grace is there for me to do it. Just help me to do it right. Amen. And not be concerned with the fact that I got to do it at all. But just, Lord, help me do it right. That's a star. That's a star. All right? Okay. Let's go a little further now. So Noah was a star. We saw how he began the world over again and all of that. Thank God for that. What about Moses? Couldn't leave him out, right? Hebrews 11 and 23, what does that say? By faith, Moses, when he was born, mm -hmm. was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. Yes. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. And the king was trying to kill all those babies, but they were not even afraid of him. If you were in a situation like that, and then you know that if you had a son, they were going to try to kill your son, could you stand there boldly and say, I ain't scared of you? Think about it. That's a star. Already, that was a star. Read on. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. And some of you might not know the story. I don't know. So in the boldness and not being afraid of, the, of Pharaoh, who was trying to kill all the Hebrew boys, no, Moses' mom put him in that little, like she made like a little ark, right? And she waterproofed it with pitch, right? And laid her little crying baby. Can you lay your baby into something and send it floating down the river? But she was saving his life by faith. By faith. And by faith, she's looking for God to do something for that child and not let him drown. Mm-hmm. She didn't know what was going to become of him. And look how God let him float down the river crying just at the time when Pharaoh's daughter was coming down to bathe herself. And they heard the baby crying. Instant touch of heart, right? Touched her heart. Drew the baby out and she just fell in love with the little Hebrew baby and made it her own child. That was God all the way. Instead of being raised as a slave, he was raised in the palace. Look at that. When you trust God, I'm telling you, even for your children, the wonderful things God will do for them just because you had faith. We can shine like stars for our children. Amen. All right, we'll go a little further. Verse 25. All right. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God mm -hmm. than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. See, that truth was in him because he, he learned who his people were because his sister Miriam would take it, offer to take him to, to the mother so that she could feed him. All right? So, and, and Pharaoh's daughter was in agreement with that. What did that do? Put him among his own people so he could see where they come from, who they are, right? right? And what they're going through. So in growing up, he had, he had enough of it. The only thing is he thought he was going to save Israel in the flesh. That was the problem, because he didn't yet have an experience with God like that yet. Amen. And a lot of people try to do that, right? They try to sacrifice and do things, trying to help this world out, but they don't have God. They might make a little comfort or make people feel a little bit better, but they can't deliver anybody. So the stuff goes right back into the same old cycle again. Right. That's why we have to really get our witness out here, let our, our light so shine, because people... There are some good-hearted people out here, but they don't have the Father. And they need to know what it really takes to help this world, all right? All right, so he chose to suffer affliction with the people of God. Um, verse 26, what does that say? Esteeming the reproach of Christ yes. greater riches than the treasure in treasures in Egypt. Yes. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. All right, keep reading. By faith, he 
forsook Egypt, yes. not fearing the wrath of the king, mm -hmm. for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. As though he saw God already, read on. Through faith he kept the Passover mm -hmm. and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. Now I'll touch on that again in a little bit. Keep going. By faith they passed through the Red Sea yes. as by dry land. By dry land, yes. Which the Egyptians assayed to do were drowned. So the Egyptians tried to mock him and do the same thing. They died. Okay, now. Let's see how God got Moses' attention. We'll back up a little bit and go to Exodus, the third chapter. Let's look at this star a little more closely, because Moses was a star. That's for sure. And look at the huge responsibility laid upon him. All right? Exodus 3, verse 2. What does that say? And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire yes. out of the midst of a bush. Yes. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. God knew how to get his attention. Keep reading. And Moses said, mm -hmm. I will now turn aside and yes. see this great sight, yes. why the bush is not burnt. Keep going. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, mm -hmm. Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. God will call us when he's ready to do some great thing with us. You know that? He can call us by our name, which is awesome to me. And we say, here am I. Here I am. Lord, what do you want me to do? Lord, I'm here for you. We have to be willing to suffer, though. Otherwise, we can't say that. Not with, any, with our heart being in it, right? I got to be willing to suffer because whatever he get me to do, it's going to be some suffering to my flesh to do it. Whatever it is. That's right. So here's another star that was willing to stop, look, and listen. All right? Look at... Um, verse 5. Verse 5, yes. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Mm -hmm. Put off thy shoes from thy feet. Draw not nigh hither. Don't come here yet. Take your shoes off. Why? Read it. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. God wants to show us some holy ground to step up to. And then we get, conquer that. He's going to show us some more holy ground to step up to. All the way till we get to glory. Isn't that something? Amen. Read on. Moreover, he said, mm -hmm. I am the God of thy father, yes. the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. This is his first real meeting with God. And you know, when God begins to deal with us, there's a little fear in it, isn't it? Yeah, some people have a lot of fear. Because you, he starts showing you what you need to let go of. It starts convicting you over things you're doing, and you can figure out we're talking about a life change here, and that could be a little frightening, especially if you're not if you weren't raised up in truth. It could be frightening, but when you know when you figure out it's the voice of God talking to me, and the things that I'm looking at that I want to hold on to are not good for me. After a while, it's like they're not making me happy anyway, Lord. What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do, Lord? I'll do it. Save me, Lord. All right? Well, Moses had an experience too. All right, let's see. Verse 7, what does it say? And the Lord said, Yes. I have surely seen the affliction of my people yes. which are in Egypt. Yes. And have heard their cry by reason mm -hmm. of their taskmaster. For I know their sorrows. And here, I am come Here comes responsibility. God sees a cry going up out here today. There's a cry going up from this planet. Death, destruction, disease, famine, starvation, hatred, mass murders are all over the world, everywhere. My God, war over stupid stuff. Yes, there's a cry going up. Who is he going to send? Who is he going to send? Think about it, because we're the ones. We're the ones. Read on. What verse, verse are we eight? At? Verse eight. Okay. And I am come down to deliver them I'm out of the hand of the Egyptians. I come down to deliver them. All right. And to bring them out, up, out of that land, mm -hmm. 
unto a good land and a large, yes. unto a land flowing with milk and honey, yes. unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites mm -hmm. and the Amorites and the Perizzites yes. and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Keep going. Now, therefore, behold, mm -hmm. The cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. Yes. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. So what does he want to do? Read the next one. Come now, therefore. Here it goes. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Now here's another one. What? You want to do what? I ran from Pharaoh because I killed somebody 40 something years ago. Now you want to send me to him? Think about that. What is he going to ask us to do? Think about it. Read on. And I will send thee unto Pharaoh, mm -hmm. that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Six million souls. Was that six million or 600,000? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Okay. Six. Well, that's still a big number. 600,000. That probably seemed like six million. He said, you're going you're gonna to bring them out. What? Amen. Why? Because I see your potential to shine like a star. God sees our potential when he first saves us. He does. And he knows what we're good for and how he can use us. And you might even look back at your life and see where you might have gravitated towards certain things in helping if the church or going forth and helping in different ways some gravitate toward the sick, right? And they're really good with visiting or even laying hands on them and God blesses and they carry that burden. Someone else might gravitate toward helping the poor or gathering clothing and different things to show love to those that are out there in their misery, right? Someone else might um, find themselves teaching and witnessing and witnessing and teaching and before they know it, they've gone and walked into ministry. There's just different ways God will lead us. Some are so good with music that music becomes a, a message in itself that can move on souls with music and that becomes their ministry. All of these things do what? Draw people to the light. All of these different talents. And God knows what each one of us is capable of. The main thing is yield yourself. That's what I want you to look at when you look at Noah. He yielded himself. And look what a huge, great work he did. Continuing humankind, which would have been wiped out if Noah had not obeyed God. That's right. Look at the great thing that Moses did. With all these people, they didn't have the faith he had. They didn't have it. And oftentimes didn't even work with him, but he, he kept going, kept doing because God said do it. God said do it. I can't stop. I can't give it up now. Pharaoh's not cooperating. Pharaoh's threatening us. He's making it hard, but I got to keep doing it because God said do it. He was a star. Can you do that? That's the question. You don't know when you're going to be put in a situation where you got to just keep going, keep going. Everything's working against you. People are resisting you, but you got to keep on. Why? Because God said go. That's right. This grace is sufficient for whatever he has in mind for us. All right. What verse are we at? Verse 11. Keep going. And Moses said unto God, mm -hmm. who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? So he started shaking on this, didn't he? Read on. And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. Yes. Verse 12. And he said, certainly I will be with thee. Yes. And this it. shall be a token unto thee mm -hmm. that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, mm -hmm. ye shall serve God upon this mountain. All right. So then God sent Moses, right? He was willing to go. He gave him a little help with Aaron, his brother, right? Even Miriam was a backup to help them, to encourage him and all that. And that was a good thing. But the pressure was on Moses. And Pharaoh's wrath was against Moses. Because he's the one that said, thus saith the Lord, you let my people go. Talking to the king of Egypt. Like, who are you? I don't know the Lord and I'm not letting your people go. So what did God have to do with him? I'm going to read through this for speed's sake. 
go over to Psalms 105. And I'm going to slide right through it. So you, if you want to look at it and absorb it later, you can go back in, in your devotions and, and read this. So he sent Moses his servant and Aaron, who he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Now look at all the stuff that God had to do to Egypt to, turn, to finally get Pharaoh to break down and let the children of Israel go. He sent darkness and made it dark and they rebelled not against his word. He turned their waters into blood and slew their fish. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance in the chamber of their kings, frogs all in the bedroom. He spake and there came diverse sorts of flies and lice in all their coast. He gave them hail for rain and flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines and also their fig trees and break the trees of their coast. He spake and the locusts came and caterpillars and that without number, big black clouds of bugs eating up everything, just everything in sight. And he did eat up all the herbs of the land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He smote also, look at this, this is the last one. He smote also all the firstborn in their land, the chief of all their strength. That death angel came through. And what did he tell Moses to do? Have the children of Israel do what? Put blood on the doorpost, the blood of a lamb. And when the death angel comes over, he sees the blood, it's going to pass right over you. Even to this day, when the death angel sees the blood covering the saints, he just passes right over. Amen. In verse 37, he brought them forth. He got them out. Moses did it by the grace of God. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Talk about God. When God saves you, there's nothing feeble in your experience. Nothing. He prepares you for whatever he got waiting for you in the future. He gives you strength. He builds your faith. He pours that joy into your spirit, right? He gives you that amazing peace. Well, that, who can stop you when you're feeling good like that? And you've never felt like that before, right? Devil, get out my face. You have the power to tell the devil, get lost. That's amazing. He'll bring you out, right? Amen. Not one feeble among them. And his, Egypt was glad when they departed. Get out of here, for you'll kill us all, right? For the fear of them fell upon them. The fear of you will fall upon those that oppose you when they see God working with you. All right? So um, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to stop there. There might be a part three. But the main thing is, look at those stars. Look at Abel with a perfect sacrifice. So much so that his brother got jealous of it because God consumed it miraculously. He was pleased with Abel and his offering, right? And look at Noah, the huge undertaking that would just fell on his, in his lap in a matter of speaking. But he moved with fear. And he got it done. God gave him the grace to perform a huge feat. That's right. And he worshiped and praised God all the way through it. And praised him when he got off that boat. Amen. And then Moses, at one point, thought he could save his people by himself. He couldn't do it. God had to give him an experience and call him, set aside. Come on, step aside. Forget what's out here. I want you to step aside. I got some words for you. And he saw that burning bush. And that was the beginning of the rest of his life. Changed from that point. Isn't that amazing? And the law came through Moses to save those people, to prepare them from heaven. Isn't that amazing? Forerunner of Jesus Christ. What an honor. Because... He was willing to let his light so shine. So we don't know what's waiting on us, saints. But the main thing is, 
Let your mind expand to where God can use you any way he wants to. Somebody told me one time, and it, it stuck with me, and it really troubled me. I was trying to encourage them to, you know, let the Lord use them in a certain way. And the person said, Sister Deborah, I know my limitations. As saints of God, we don't have limitations. Always remember that. Unless God limits us. And he said, we can do all things through Christ. Keep that in your mind. If something comes your way, be a star about it. Because you can do whatever God asks you. Whatever comes your way, he'll give you the grace to be a star. And your light will so shine that it'll draw people just by what you're going through, by what God uses you to do. It'll draw them. How does she do it? How does he do it? That's amazing. That's right. It's our turn now. These others have gone off. The ones in, in uh, Hebrews 11 have gone off the scene. We're here. And it's the same God and the same Jesus. They haven't changed. And the things they may require haven't changed. So get ready. If you're going to be a star, be a star. Don't pick your battles when it comes to God. Let God pick them for you. All right? All right. We're going to stop there for time's sake. So we thank God for you. Again, thank you for all those that are online, that are here. Let God talk to you about what it's going to take to be a star. Don't, don't be afraid to suffer. No one's beating you with a whip. You haven't died on anybody's cross. None of us have shed blood. So God, help us not to be squeamish and I can't. You don't, don't lie. But if you say, I can't, God's not putting that in your mouth. He says you can. Look at, look at Moses and look at Noah. Those situations would say, I can't, but they did it. Amen. If they did it, that we can do things, we can do great things too. All right, so God bless you. We're going to be praying for you. Remember me, because I'm determined to be a star until it's time to go home. Amen. And I trust that you feel the same way. God bless you.